Sounds like Kevin's got his a TV set on. <laughs> Kevin. Hey God, how you doing, Kevin? Good to see you again, man. How y'all doing? Doing great. What's up? Doing great. And it's I, I had the pleasure of being able to interview you the last time. I know you might not recognize me. I got a lot of a lot hairier since our last interview. I just let it grow during COVID, <laughs> man. I'm just done. <laughs> so had to have so, something to do. Are, are you down? Um, are you are your your parents' house right now? Currently, are you in uh, Louisiana? Where are you at right now? I'm, I'm still in Dallas. That's where I train in it. Where oh, I'm cool, cool, nice. Because when I interviewed you the last time, you were sitting there in your dad's basement with the big. The, the Steeler man cave that which is one that even I envied with that beautiful mm -hmm. uh, you know gold felt across the pool table and it was just so great. So the first thing I have to ask you, man, has your dad come down yet from the fact that you're a Pittsburgh Steeler? Is he definitely not? Definitely not. <laughs> like, look, I just feel like every time he comes to a game or something like that, it like the intensity never fell off. Just like oh. dang. My nice. son, my son is really, <laughs> and it just—I don't think it's—it's it's, it's worn off at all on him. I don't and know how? Was, how often does your dad get to come to games? He went to every game, isn't he? Oh, that's every, <laughs> that was so awesome. He went to every one. Oh, he could, and it, it, that's got to be the best because then he gets to mm -hmm. root for you and yep. just at, root for his Steelers at the same time. And you are also one of the unique players because you were born into Steeler Nation before you ever became a, a football player for the Steelers. I mean, you've been watching the Steelers your whole, your whole life with your dad and seeing his passion for the team. So what's it like on draft day? Do you still get excited about the Steelers drafted drafting, even though you're a member of the Steelers or does it feel a little different now that you are a Pittsburgh Steeler? I feel like it's, it's, it's a little more, um, you know, say it's not, it's more important now because it's like, okay. These yeah. are people that you're about to be working with now for his like for the next few years. Yeah. So you want to be able to get that good pick, but you you really have no say so. So you still <laughs> the same predicament you were before you were even in the league. So you know when it comes down to it, it, it it's always been important. But and I, I, Kevin, I need to introduce uh, Jordan Deficios here with me. She What's is up? she's with the podcast a lot and also hosts quite a few helmet hair as well as the sister podcast, which is Yinzer's podcast here at SteelerNation.com. I, I, she's been chomping at the bit to meet you and I'm sure she's got, oh, yeah. some, she's got some questions for you as well. <laughs> yeah, you were, dude, I, I can't remember a draft pick that uh, the Steelers fan base was so excited about without knowing anything about them because right. You weren't invited to the combine. Like you were on nobody's radar. And as soon as they called your name, it was, it was almost like we knew that you were a Steeler. Like we it just deep down, there was something about you that was Pittsburgh because we were like, Oh my God. Yeah. That, that's it. That's, that's our guy. And we were just so pumped. And then all of that video footage of you training and like, oh my God, the, the amount of weight that you can lift and just your work ethic and, and, and the way that you approach the game and the, the very, the very few opportunities that we got to see you play last year just made us want more. Like we're, we are so excited to see you every single snap this year because you oh my god you're just you're an electric presence on the field and that it, yeah it was just it was awesome so what what was it like coming into the NFL uh in the middle of a pandemic because like you you came in there was no rookie camp there was no real like OTA type stuff going on you had a very limited training camp and then no preseason just kind of like right into it what was that experience like you know you the fact that I didn't get to to like really go through the the true process of becoming a stiller but you know it's kind of I could say it was kind of nerfed down for me the experience a little bit mm -hmm. but the fact that this the city and the town was just so welcoming to me it was like like you like you would talk about like I got so much love off just I don't even know how I got that much <laughs> love like I 
nobody knew me. Like you said, nobody knew me. Nobody heard of my school before, really. Mm -hmm. So when I got drafted and I had so many people like, oh, man, you're going to be great, yada, yada, yada. I really, I rarely got hate. <laughs> That's I was awesome. just like, I got friends who got a whole bunch of friends who got drafted last year. And I'm like, they're telling me these things that like people are going in their DM, like, boo, like, it, like, I didn't get any type of hate. I'm <laughs> like, this is, this is great. Like, I'm good. Uh, and then, you know, once they found out I was still a fan, that just multiplied at times 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm still for life, regardless of what happens. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever happens in the future, I'm gonna be be a uh, stiller through and through. So I feel like these are my people, and I'm just trying to make them proud for real. That's yeah, that's awesome. And just quickly here, Kadarius Tony was just taking the wide receiver to the New York Jets. Um, we're now at pick 22, it looks like, and the Colts are on the clock. But I, I know, at least for me, uh you're one of the people that did put Louisiana Lafayette on the map to be in that raging Cajun that you are. And we see how you rage on the, on the field, both at right, right guard and left guard last year, because you had to first come in for David DeCastro when he got hurt early and you had an excellent game. And after that, you ended up coming in for uh, Matt Filer then uh, at left guard. So I know mostly you played right guard in college. It looked like you had <laughs> an easy transition almost seamless because you were playing at a high level on the left side either did it feel that much different to you going to the other side it was there's a, a little bit of a learning curve for you it's a it's a huge learning curve it, it looks yeah, it's like, like, I was doing, like it was easy but yeah. the only reason that it looked good because i have to think on every play yeah so if when i'm on the right side i'm on autopilot I know how my body moves and my body is just yeah. it, it's going through the motions. Yeah. Cause you've been so doing it forever side. since high school, you've been playing right side, right? Since high school. Yeah. So when <laughs> I get on the left side, I have to say, all right, foot here, hand here, foot here, hand here. So the fact that I had to think about it constantly, it kept me in, in that motion, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's great. So mm -hmm. I know when we talked before, earlier we said that your brother who I knew back in high school when you were playing with him that he was the center for your team and that he was helping you a little bit with taking snaps now have you been working out at taking snaps at all, all this off season? is there any chance of you coming in and, and possibly competing for that center slot no I'm not really training for center is it's okay. uh, center is just a different beast man it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a, a thing where you could just come off the ball and well for me at least it's, it's one of those things you got to do a lot of thinking you got to be in the room with the quarterbacks you have to know safety movements you got to know all this stuff and I, I just I feel like it would it would mess my game up so I'm just trying to focus on guard nice nice mm -hmm. and now we're getting to the point of the draft where everybody wants to know do you have a preference of who the Steelers should be taking here coming up in the next couple picks <sighs> Not really. Uh, um, I see a lot of people talking about uh, Najee and a lot of people talking yeah. about getting a tackle. Uh, I feel good about either decision, really, when it comes to that. Uh, I feel like this year's offensive line and what we're doing on offense, what, the things that we're changing, I feel like it'll be good for anybody that we bring in to plug into the system. So if we get a tackle, that'll help. If yeah. we get a run back, that'll help. Mm -hmm. Really, anybody will help in this situation. Nice. And I, and I know that for me, though, I, I know that it's, it's tough to be able to say things, but for me, I, I mean, I'd be excited as an offensive guard to be able to come in and block for a new player. If somebody kind of excited mm -hmm. to give you a little bit of extra energy there in the, uh, in the off season and preseason there to, to see the new kid come in and hopefully help out the team. Same thing with the safety or somebody that you'd be blocking next to, as opposed to somebody jumping on the other side of the field at defense. So definitely understand that. I've got a couple girls here on the, uh, that, that I'm going to admit who are the other parts of the Yinsers podcast. And of course they are on the Yinsers podcast with Jordan DeFigio. I am now introducing Morgan Erzo and Samantha James. They are all huge fans of yours, Kevin Dotson. So they all went hey. to come on and say hello. 
and uh, welcome you to the Steeler Nation draft show. So welcome, Morgan and Samantha. How you been? Good. How are hey, you? Hey, what's up, Striker? Um, <laughs> not, I'm just stressed out of my mind. How are you? <laughs> stressed out of your mind because we're getting two picks away. To the oh my God, we're so close. We're going to be drafting, right? Oh, uh, <laughs> easy. So Samantha, uh, Morgan, I, I want to give you the opportunity to talk directly to Kevin. Uh, please, I'll, I'll start with you, Morgan, because I know you've always got something to say. And uh, <laughs> give him a, let, let him know at least what you're interested in learning about him today. I mean, you can't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> well, I am. Now I, I have nothing to say. I've got the Yinzers. This is your job. <laughs> interview people that you have the podcast but i'll throw to samantha then samantha <laughs> we'll let you calm down we know you're excited he's a famous Pittsburgh. Little stressed. You know how little it stressed. Is. <laughs> so samantha stressed. what's on your mind um i don't know okay a couple episodes back right i did not think that we would go running back first round and now my perspective has completely switched yeah. Which is why I hate also talking about the draft because I know someone's going to come back and be like, you didn't think we were going to take a running back. And now I'm like, oh man, I think we are. Yep. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't understand like mock drafts and things like that. Yeah. It's really just getting people hopes up. You never right. know mm -hmm. what the right. team is thinking. You could be thinking this dude is going to be going first round. I had some people before me last year. Like the, every mic draft, I'm like number five. Some of the people didn't get drafted. And I was like, mm -hmm. that's crazy. So I, I, I'm glad I didn't really fall into that hype of looking at those, but it can really I'm, hurt. I'm so with you on that. Like, I don't understand mock drafts at all. And I would have people on Twitter daily, Morgan, who are we taking? Where's your mock draft? And like, I don't, I can't, I don't like mock drafts. They drive me insane, to be completely honest with you. I tweeted something like, can't wait for the draft to be over, not because we're going to have like all these awesome new guys on our team, but because all the mock drafts will just disappear. And then someone was like, yeah, until someone puts out the way too early mock draft for 2022. And I'm like, can we just not with the mocks, please? Yeah, and like how many people had Chase Claypool going to the Steelers at 42 right. last year? Yeah. yeah. Please stop. It's just, it's a way for people to, to scratch that itch of being a GM when they know that they never will be able to. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm with all of you. I don't, I don't really get them. Like it's, it's, it's good to speculate, but I feel like whenever you do get into that rhythm of like mock draft, mock draft, mock draft, it's like, oh my God, settle down. Like it's, it, it, you I, don't, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's a reason that you're doing a mock draft and not a real draft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, kind also, of, it loops you into a false sense of security as a fan, because you're expecting the Steelers to take these players. So when they don't take these players, you get offended <laughs> which is well, like an odd okay, way so I was just gonna to say <laughs> I was just gonna say like you watch these fans who are at the draft right live yeah. reacting to their team's pit <laughs> right. and half of them have no idea who these guys are and it's so funny because you just know that these people had someone in mind because they read one too many mock drafts and when mm -hmm. it wasn't that name they can't hide it on yeah. live television this is the biggest night of these guys lives and they're just standing there like that's a, that's a reaction. You can kill uh, a player's whole Absolutely. ego. So if, if somebody, because you know teams can talk to you, they can tell you anything they want. They can lie all day. They could tell you, I'm getting mm -hmm. first round. Hey, don't you won't be up there long. Right. Don't get drafted. And that could mess up your mental. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> not a, it's not even a thing oh. that you can really. That's why I don't understand really putting those out. Yeah. And it's like, you don't get anything for being right or wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you throw these just fake numbers out, these fake picks out. So, I mean, it's really yeah. just for those people who want to, you know, after the fact, be like, this was my mock. Here's proof that I kind of know what I'm talking about or not at all. Yeah. Unless you're putting money on who getting drafted. Yeah. Well, right. I'll, I'll tell you the one thing that I thought was incredible that the Steelers, even without a first round draft pick last year, 
ended up getting incredible value the entire way through the draft not only just from front to back, everybody made the roster at one point in the season, everybody's rostered, everybody's returning next year. You got, there was no first round draft pick. And Mm -hmm. what did they do? They, they still got the best players they could find chase Claypool coming in, making plays on offense, Alex Highsmith coming in, making plays on the edge and now starting for us there, you know, Anthony McFarland coming out next, just right before you, Kevin, and you're now our starter at guard. We have uh, Antoine Brooks, Jr. The thumper from Maryland as well. Carlos Davis making waves too on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you remember? And and (laughs) This was interesting. I, I interviewed Carlos too, and I got to have him back on to ask, but it, there, it was toward the end of the year. It looked like he and bugs were getting into it a little bit on the sideline during a game. Uh, did you hear what was going on during that? Or was it just a whole lot of nothing? I think they were just trying to, they were just trying to get reps. You know, yeah. once, once you yeah. get fighting for that position, you, you really just trying to get reps. And, you know, if somebody posts be in and somebody else trying to make their, make their move, you know, something going to happen you know grown men trying to get paid yes (laughs) and that's that's the competitive nature as your coach says you know two dogs one bone and he loves to see that competition uh out of out of his players and he gets the most out of it and what's it like now that you played a full year under coach tomlin yeah great uh tomlin is legit exactly as i thought he would be Mm -hmm. when i met him like the reason the way that y'all think of him right now Uh that's exactly how it is Hmm. Like he's talking football a hundred percent of the time. It's not 99% of the time. It's <laughs> and it's like when he's not with his family, yeah. Football. Football. We walk through the hallway, football, football. Yeah. You hmm. see, you go and get lunch, you see somebody, you see him. Oh yeah. What about this when this happened on this play? Oh well, I mean Yeah. I, I was just cooling. I'm not trying to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, that's it. Yeah. That's great. And just quickly, uh, Caleb Farley, the cornerback from Virginia Tech, was just taken by the Tennessee Titans. We are on deck. The, oh, God. Yep. Yeah, the the uh, Minnesota Vikings are currently on the clock. So Steelers are on deck. I will be inviting the rest of the contributors on here shortly um, once the pick is in here for Minnesota. So all of you in the waiting room, be prepared to jump back on here with Kevin Dotson to get all of our reactions here when the Steelers pick Kevin's right. newest teammate coming up here shortly within the next 15 minutes. So who's Sorry excited? If you could just hear me typing. Everyone says like type loud. <laughs> <laughs> type angry. <laughs> oh, you mean, you mean ready for, for when everybody comes back out for yes. being upset? I mean, you oh. can feel, you can feel the heat right now and the keyboard. I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm sweating a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you're getting a lot of love Yinzers over here on, uh, on social media. Uh, Yinzers in the house. Yo Yinzers. Love me some Fiji, Morgan, Samantha, hashtag Yinzers from, from Gabe Gotti, Robert C, M Soko. And M Soko said, Samantha, you need to unblock me with a sad face. I don't know what's going on. Oh there. my God. Not going to happen. <laughs> Morgan needs to join Steeler Nation and deal with coach. That's an inside joke for the people on the forum. No one needs to deal with that. Robert, get that out of your head. <laughs> what are we talking about? These I are, know, I'm scared. No, this is this is just strictly things that happened before social media like Twitter and uh, Instagram. We used to have things called forums. And us old people still jump on these football forums. Oh, my dad, all- that's all he does. Yes. That's yeah. all he does. <laughs> Every day he's calling me, he's like, the boys in the burger pissed. Yep. I'm like, what? what, dad, what do they say today? Something off the forum. <laughs> so now we're at the point, like, Steelers, there's going to be a lot of talent on the board. Either they're, they're going to go up and grab the guy they want, or they may be in the talks to trading back. Um who, who knows what's going to happen because there's going to be a lot of talent uh, on the board with yeah. all the wide receivers, cornerbacks and quarterbacks, which has come off the board. Um, you know, there's, there's some positions I don't think that have even been touched yet. Let me go over to the big board quickly, just so I can take a look and yeah, running back has not been touched yet. Uh, so, and that right now that's pretty much the only position that hasn't been touched. So it looks like the best value coming up could be running back. There's some good offensive tackles. There's some good edge players still left here on defense. 
another good, you know, um, linebacker and um, an edge rusher here um, and an inside linebacker too from uh, Jeremiah from Notre Dame. I know some people have been talking about Greg Newsom is, is still around Caleb Fairley. I know just came off the board, but still some good talent here. Uh, I know it's not something that the Steelers usually do. I know they would not trade out of the first round. I just don't see that happening at all, but it, it's getting to uh, excitement time here for Steeler nation fans and uh, on, uh, uh, who yeah. we think we're going to be uh, the drafting. I mean, I, I seriously would love, I love the thought of trading down because, you know, I'm so happy if we can get like more draft picks, right? Like that's, yeah. that's what we could really use is more draft picks. And with, so many guys still on the board who have been tied to the Steelers. And we know like, we can't really trust the reports that come out. Like they're interested in this guy and this guy and this guy, like maybe they're not at all interested in any of them. And the guys we liked in the first round are already gone. Like we'll never know, but I love the thought of trading down in theory. My stress right now cannot take that. I need to know right now. I need to know. The Vikings pick is in, by the way. So great. Yeah. And I want to congratulate uh, Gabe Gotti. He has just won the Kevin Dotson signed Color Rush jersey Yo. from Enterprises. Congratulations, Gabe Gotti. I will be reaching out to you via YouTube and be writing that down so I don't forget it. <laughs> so, congratulations, Gabe. You won. Mr. Kevin Dotson's signed color yeah. rush jersey. So Love cheers. It. Congrats. <laughs> I think I think the Steelers need to to stay put where they are throughout the draft. Like I I, I know I know that there's strategy to it and I know that things change, but I feel like this is a team that that needs to choose their identity moving forward and figure out what their what their goal is and stick with it and I think that because at this point all of the guys that are or or have been linked to them are still available then go with the guy that you want because they obviously have a number one choice like that's not like they're all three the same like same level I I think just go with it don't don't risk missing out on your number one guy, because if that's, if that's what you view as your number one need, go for it, address it right away. Mm -hmm. And then maybe later on in the draft, dabble a little bit with movement, but I, I feel like they management at least and ownership needs to send a message like this. We know what we're doing. Like we we've made up our mind this is how we're going to move forward because we know that we have a very limited time frame to work with Ben because he's right. old and he's probably on his way out. At, if not after this season, after the fall, Jordan, he's bionic. He's got that bionic arm. He's, he's mm-hmm. around for the long haul, <laughs> but it, that's big. Hey, um, Kevin, I wanted to get your, um, uh, your thoughts on this and it like, Ben Roethlisberger came back this year. Um, he took a pay cut. How does that, how does that speak to him as a leader and it set an example for the rest of the team? When you've got your your leader out there taking a pay cut, putting in the work also last year just to come back and play, uh, how does that feel to you to play for for a guy like that? I think it just shows that he's he wants to win and he'll do what it takes to win, and he doesn't, he doesn't feel like he's out of the loop yet yeah you know it's, it's not one of those things where you just you just leave the game and like nothing happened he, he want to leave on a good a good note yeah and he feel like he can still do that so you know to know that somebody is willing to to, to give up money which is what the league is really yeah really about now, like you can say it's about yeah. wins, but it's really about money to give that up everybody in the locker room knows that you really did something in that you really care about football. Nice. It definitely made a statement for sure to, to, to everyone, to fans, to yes. the media, to other teams, mm-hmm. but especially in the locker room, right? Especially to the Steelers organization, that front office, the locker room, his teammates. I think that was huge. Um, I, I think it was also big for a lot of the free agents that we expected to leave this year. Yeah. May not have left because of that, uh, because 
Ben was showing the example. It, could that be a reason why Vince Williams came back, Tyson Alualu, um, Juju Smith-Schuster? I mean, we've got a lot of a lot of big things coming on, and we 